updates to the AB Management Hill Developer Project. Uh, we've had a lot of you know exciting things moving forward. Uh, as some of you know, uh, the uh, ABD software itself was a project I started many years ago, about 14 years ago, actually. Uh, there, and uh, unfortunately, I had to take a, a step away back into my career for a good period of time and everything, but. Uh, I am now back working full time on the completion of this project. Uh, it is being funded uh, to completion by the Young Lake, and it will be available, uh, you know, exclusively from them uh, off of their store. So, the concept uh, itself, we have several different uh, components pulled together to try to create uh, a visual IDE environment natively for MeetOS 4, and. The, uh, the big components, of course, is typically the text editor and the GUI builder uh, is one of the biggest things that we're noticing. And the SDK browser is what you know I've had out there for quite a while now. It's freely available and it's, I find very useful for, for documentation. Let me increase the font size. Yeah. So, uh, part of the intention of the software is to really try to get you to work uh, very quickly in the design. Now, I'd love to be able to take and show the, the GUI uh, builder. That was the primary thing I was hoping to take and show at, at the show, but I've been doing so much work on it right up to the last minute that it, the, the current state of it is, is you know, kind of half completed. I was working on implementing uh, nearly a thousand uh, tags for all of the graphical objects. And it's not quite right to run, so um, I may show you a, a little bit of the earl, earlier, earlier version, but essentially uh, this is what we have right now. So, uh, AVD allows you to take into work and in developing software to target either a C uh, source or a uh, actual interpreted script, uh, which I call uh, uh, GUI bits as a runtime interpreter. So the idea is that you can rapidly prototype uh, your applications and you know, get something put together very quickly. Let me let me see if I can uh, run the old 14-year-old version here of the GUI builder and uh, show you. Uh, oh, of course it's still. So let's get our pieces out of the way a little bit. So I'll get the text editor and uh, the SDK browser out of the way. And this is a very old version. As you can kind of see when I had the initial version up there, that you've got a toolbars have been added for your gadgets. Uh, there is support. Uh, those are those are just straight uh, uh, PNG files in a, uh, a subdirectory. Uh, under you know for the given size, so those those icons are all replaceable with different images. Right now, I'm using uh, a set out of the uh, uh, the toolbar images that come um, stock with MegaOS 4, and uh, but they they are on higher resolutions. They're they're a little smaller. They were they were really originally designed for you know like a 1024 by 768 or, or any 800 by 600 display, and you know so we definitely intend to use uh, some newer. Uh, icons for all of that stuff. So the, the GUI builder uh, component here was, it allows you to take and get right into it. So if I wanted to take and create an interface with uh, a button on it, I could just pick from my list and say I want a button. And that gives me an, an interface and a window and a first button uh, to take and actually you know, see what it's doing. Now, Due to a, a, a very old bug in this version, I have to create another sub window and move that out of the way in order for this uh, tree view to appear. So that's, that has been solved a long time ago, but 
this is the only runnable version I have with me, so <laughs> bear with the little mistakes. Um, so you want, in creating an interface, you can do very, very quickly uh, with uh, the different uh, controls. So it's pick from whatever you want. I'm another button. I'm going to pick six more buttons. Doesn't matter. Uh, there, it's dynamic. It's, it's building the interface using live components uh, as you go. So this is not, uh, you know, a mock-up of it at all. Uh, you can take and navigate through. I can, you know, you can set just the this this very very old version. I can only set just initial properties like, uh, you know, I can I can change the, the name of the button and, you know, I can navigate and move around. So if I wanted to create an interface. Uh, let's remove these guys out of here. If they wanted to create something like a uh, uh, a wizard tool of some kind. So this now I'm back to I've got to the, the whole window I'm back to just a uh, root base. And for a wizard tool, I'm going to want like to, to start out with a vertical group here that you got already. And then I want something like a, a text display. Uh, so I could go with uh, this, but use the text editor as a base, and then underneath that, I want to create uh, a row with um, a couple of buttons on the side of it. So I'll create a horizontal group underneath that, and then a button, and then a space, and then a button, and then you know you can see that you know by default these guys are growing to you know their whatever their, their dimensions allow for the, each size. You would normally take and set the uh, a property called weight on these gadgets to give them a, a, a value. Say, so I want this to be 20%, that to be 80%, whatever. In this particular version, I can use another mechanism within it, which allows you to fix the uh, horizontal or vertical axis down the side. So I click this button, button here, button, that's, that, that would shrink up the horizontal group. I want to leave that one there. But if I go up to the top, this is going to shrink everything. So no, I, I don't really want that. Uh, I just want the buttons. So what I really should have done is create a vertical group, and now I want to move that in there. So I'll take and take this guy, and I'll put that into that vertical group. I'll put this, that, this above it, and now I will. Oh, I want a horizontal, and then I'll take it down to there. So now you have what you were more looking for out there. And of course, we can put all kinds of other things in here. Or use this as a little test board to be able to show the different gadgets you can create, check boxes, uh, which you know, can span over there, uh, chooser, add some chooser items to it. So if you've got that there, these guys, so let's make a, let's get this a little bit of a group. Let's make a vertical group for this chooser. For the check boxes, I'll move them down, move them in here. And you can see you just navigate through. Now, you will be able to do stuff like drag and drop and, and, and stuff like that for uh, moving these things around. With this, like a 14-year-old version, it, it's, it's just limited to uh, keyboard control or using these, these buttons up here. So if I want to move the, uh, uh, this whole layer up, I can do it this way. But so now we have the checkboxes in that kind of a group. Let's make, you know, press space here and I can change it to layout horizontal and vertical. And again, you can also use the, the, the scroll wheel to change position. So, so we've got a couple other objects on here. Let's put another uh, vertical group and uh, integer value. So, uh, as you can see, you, you know you can just generally create uh, the interface to very quickly. So, if we take this original one we were, we were working on. And we just want to uh, generate the uh, code for it. Uh, we can do let's give this a name. Say this is like you know, previous, and you know this one is next. And now, and we can also we can get a title to the window. This guy would be like you know a wizard tool. But of course, I mean, you'd make it up whatever you want to do. But the point is, I wanted to show this, so that we had some, some idea of the initial GUI creation um, from back in the past when it was just this set. This is basically up to about 2010.
Now the output here, I can just take this interface as I've designed, and I can tell it to go to build and say, export this as a GUI bits project. And then it'll ask me, okay, where do you want to put it? I'm just going to throw it into RAM and give it a name, uh, wizard. Here's the output uh, from AVD itself, the GUI Builder component, and it's, it's really a pretty straightforward uh, XML description of what you build, uh, which can take you know quite some time to figure out if you're doing it for the very first time. So here's the, the description, um, it's an AVD file that does for GUI bits, and it describes the window, the properties, IDC and PFLEX used for the window, the tags uh, that we use for the window, uh, and then sets up menus and, and everything by default because it's actually, uh, this is just like the AMD template uh, software which is used for generating C code. So the, there's a, uh, when you're developing software with AMD, I'm, I'm striving to make it so that you can develop in a, a duality, you can parallel at the same time, you can develop your application and export it out as an XML description, which can be run by the uh, uh, GUI bits interpreter, uh, or as actual C to the uh, uh, one of the AVD template uh, sources to take and actually uh, produce a, a closed binary compiled executable. And I, I would like to be able to take and do all of the same actions and everything on both. Uh, and that's what this is uh, striving to do. So again, this XML, and, and so this this application is uh, just like the compiled template version. It has. Oh, yeah, back. I'm looking at the interface itself. There we go. This is the one. Um, it has a menus up here. Okay. Click on there. Our application has a set of uh, you know uh, ready to use uh, stuff, allowing it to be hidden, iconified. Yeah, so. 
as a text editor, open file, uh, you know, new file, open file, save, cut, copy, paste, undo, redo, are all connected in here. But that's about it. So right now it's it's at the state of uh, being a, uh, a kind of glorified notepad, or closer to code pad, if anybody is, is familiar with, with that. A uh, few more features on that for this. So it's just in its infancy. But the actual class itself has a lot of features to offer, and they're not that difficult to work with. The documentation being provided by those guys is great. So, now other things I, I have added for that's different from mine uh, is the, uh, the way that the projects and file management is. I have this section here. I can collapse that panel, get that out of the way, or bring it up, adjust it between the, the sizes, whatever you want. And when when the software runs, it takes in uh, does a scan of all of your active projects, picks up all your project files for you. And as you select uh, your, your project, you just pull down and say, oh, I wanna, I wanna work on that to-do list, what I was doing. What it will do, that's part of right, right in the middle of, of finishing that code, is of course it will bring up a tree view here of all of your actual uh, files, so something closer to Visually, this is better. 
uh, what I had on the old one, objects, this is the object list, I also have clipboard on here, and that was very handy as you did the designs, as I was showing the other one, you throw objects on there, you don't like where they are, you, you remove them. They just get thrown back onto the clipboard exactly as they are. So let's say you, you create a virtual group, you put some different gadgets in there, and then you decide, no, I don't want that or I don't want it there, and you remove it. Well, it gets removed from your interface, but it moves as a pointer and to the clipboard, and it remains built exactly as it was. So you can then take that pre-built uh, chunk of uh, interface and paste it back into anywhere within the other interface or any other interface that you're doing. The, uh, so just the clipboard allows you some, uh, to, as a temporary base, to pull stuff out of one interface or part of your own interface and pull it, you know, pull it out and then move it around very easily uh, that way from one to the other. In addition to that now, with the new uh, uh, GUI builder, I've added a, uh, a new tab on here, a new concept called modules. Now modules are essentially segments of pre-created design. So exactly the same thing that you might do with the clipboard. I've designed an interface part. I didn't like what I had. I clipped it. Well, you could also now take and say, I, I built an interface up to this point, including the action, setting actions for the buttons and any scripting attachments and stuff. And then you can say, I want to save this as a module. And you give it a name and it puts it into the modules. And again, it's just, an, it's just XML description of that much of the code, but it understands that it's a piece, a module that you can reuse. And so you'll end up collecting a library of pre-created objects and sets. So like that wizard tool I was you know, roughly throwing together on the old one, you can create that wizard tool, lay out, say this, I want to use this again and again and again, so I'll just make it a module, and it'll be in my library of pre-created stuff, so I can just grab it and throw it into anything else. Now, the other thing is, uh, um, I can't really demonstrate it on here, uh, unfortunately, but you can, e you can uh, very easily import existing uh, interfaces and programs into the active work. So as you're designing an interface, uh, you've got your layouts going on there, you just say, oh, well, I, I, have, I did something like this before in my other project. Oh, you can just simply, uh, what I commonly do is I just go, I find that project file, I drag and drop it right into ABD, and it imports the entire interface. So now you've got the one you were working on and a, a, a full copy of another one you've done before. Then you can just highlight on that one, pull sections out of it, put it into the new one, and then just tell it to kill that. You know, because it's all just temporary. So, um, the object list clipboards modules. This modules, I also plan to extend this so that you will have a, a network, a cloud connection of, for the, the library of these pre-created sub-programs or interface designs so that you can decide, hey, I want to push this up for other people to use, and then you can go up and say, well, what have other people done? And just you know, import a list of, uh, of what's available on the internet from other designers. And hopefully that will, um, and it'll be integrated into uh, ABD for everybody. So everybody that is running ABD has, will have that connection of being able to share their work. Uh, so that's one small part. I know that uh, Simon with CodeBench has got uh, integration. He's got other stuff along that same line, but it, basically I think he's included like a whole chat uh, system in there from what I've seen. But cert you know, integrating that, that um, you know, social uh, media kind of side to it and bringing developers together to help solve their problems and, and you know, come up with those. Hey, I've done that before. Here it is. You know, kind of a thing. And we want to encourage that. Share code pieces, share interface designs. Uh, it also works to support um, a, a team concept so that if you have an interface designer, you got the graphics guy, and he, he knows how to lay out the interface where he wants, he or she, of course. And, you know, and you got somebody else that's working on the code, and it's, then it becomes very, very easy for them, one guy to be just put up the interface and say, here it is, this is what I think it should look like. And then for the programmer to start filling in the pieces and say, okay, try it, you know, it'll work you all like you want. And share that back and forth wherever you are. So, let's see. Um, 
So again, there's a, GUI, a brand new version of GUI Builder, which is much farther advanced. Uh, text editor based on the uh, the rich editor, uh, so same as uh, you know with CodeBench. Uh, there will be preference tools in here as well for context sensitive item. One of the questions I got: What different languages does it support for for context sensitive uh, highlighting on here? And it's really open ended because it's it saves it in as an, an XML description, and you can you can create one uh, any way you want and, and just set identifiers. Or uh, as extensions to the C, that's the way they work. So if it's uh, right now the C1, if you load in uh, .c, .cpp, .h, whatever, it knows, okay, that's the C1 model, and it does highlighting according to that. But if you had something, um, uh, you know, custom, uh, or, you know, the language didn't exist already, you wanted to bring that in, uh, you know, some 68,000 assembly, or whatever, any kind of scripting that isn't already there. Then you you can do that, but with, you, you do get a, a pretty good set with the with the uh, class the way that it is, uh, handling uh, C, AREX, uh, except PHP, uh, Python, and you know so there's lots of examples. And since it is the same editing system at the at the core, that means that you know right now CodeBench has got a a preference editor for designing and changing colors and stuff like that. You could use CodeBench as editor, save the, the lab you want, come into ABD, and there it is, and vice versa. Right now, I don't you know, have the tools designed for it, because uh, I've just got this, but of course, it will be fully integrated in ABD as well, and it'll give you the option. So it's, it really is nice to be able to jump back and forth between the two editing environments. And that's always been one of my goals with ABD. I'm not trying to make anybody use um, you know, every aspect, just 100% just only use the uh, ABD and nothing else. No, that's not the Amiga way. You know, you want to be able to use what parts of it that make sense and to get, get what the work done you need, and, and other parts of it that you want to use. So if you don't want to use this editing environment or you like CodeBench's project management stuff, you know, you just freely go back and forth. And we try, and we're working together. Um, you know, we've always been working together. Simon has been one of the, uh, the very first supporters of ABD way back in the day. He kind of, I came up with the project concept. He contacted me immediately and said, I have plans to take and you know, really, really need IDE, I have plans for it, but I really don't want to write it. I'd rather you did. So he supported me right away. But then unfortunately, I had to you know, go back to my other career and step away from the Amiga for a while. And, and he picked up and started it himself, which is fantastic because as a result, with the work that Peter had done uh, creating the Rich Editor and then Simon extending it for all of the advanced features that it needed for a true modern idea. Uh, then as a result, now we have this and it's licensed for use in ABD and it feeds back to here. So it's a win-win, I think, for everyone. So uh, again, as I say, there's lots of changes uh, that are coming for the SDK browser as well uh, that will just further integrate the, the whole thing. No. So we have the uh, we have the GUI builder, we have the text editor, we've got the SDK browser for documentation. We also have support for uh, visual debugger, uh, the support for DB101 uh, on here. Uh, I can actually, the only thing I can do for this version immediately is launch it, which it will open up on the workbench. There it is. And this is, the version that's been out there for quite a while is available freely on OS4 uh, Depot, uh, but the author, uh, uh, Alfkill is the only one, I don't know what else is the name, uh, is working on a new update to this, and I'm working with him to further support it. So there is some, there is already support that he put in ex expecting that other programs would want to interact with it, so there is part of an AREX interface for this already. Uh, and so I do have the ability to launch it uh, you know, import in the uh, the project I wanted to do, set breakpoints. So I'll be able to visually, you'll, you'll be able to visually set breakpoints within the ABD editor, and it'll feed them to DB101 and, and do it. So, and the way that this debugger works is, is you can, it's two primary modes of operation. If you can either have it select a file or a binary that you want it to run, so it's not running yet and then set it up, and set your breakpoints, and then start it through the debugger. Or you can uh, try to capture a live running application. 
uh, and, and try to debug it that way. And I've, and I've successfully used it to debug a couple of uh, pretty tricky things uh, with it. And it's, so with it, at that point where you really need to dig down and, uh, and get to it. So I'm very I'm excited to see what he comes up with because I think he's, after a lot of years of this being, being out there, is rewriting it from scratch as far as I can tell. There's a lot of things he was always said. Don't use it. Don't, you know, don't put it in this one yet. It's like you know, it's out there. I got you know, you know, same thing as any developer. Oh, don't use the old one. It's crap. The, the new one's so much better. Just ignore this one. He's like, but the old one works. <laughs> so anyway, so there, there it kind of completes the package, uh, of course, of what was always intended with with ABD. So again, key points. Uh, simultaneous development of C code. Uh, applications uh, by uh, templates uh, as, a, as a target. That's the primary thing. The idea of giving you a launching platform. Yes, you can start a project completely from scratch, bring in your files, do, do editing, use it as a general IDE. But if you want to jump right into an existing application that compiles and runs, is a commodity, register the application with the operating system, uh, to just, and which is primarily just to allow the user to control it a little more from the outside, see that it's running, you know, it's not anything, you know, as, as dark and hideous as the uh, registry concept of other systems. It's a very lightweight thing. It's just an announcement to the OS to say, hey, I'm around, and you might want to tell the user um, by name what my task is, you know, instead of just a nameless task. And, and things like that, nice little, nice little items. And it does have uh, extend other capabilities. Uh, so, you know, again, you have an a the ABD template uh, is the first template, uh, which is a which is an application template. So you design your graphical interface, and output the code changes directly into that existing code. So you're you're modifying the software modifies a known quantity to do that. Uh, then also, but at the same time, you also have the interpreted version of it. So as you just output it as uh, an XML with an icon default tool of the interpreter, and you can just immediately run it. And I'm providing support in there so that um, what you can do with the uh, interpreted version, you can also do in the C version. And some of the things you can do in the interpreted version is have it launch a whole variety of different languages and scripts. There's no reason to tie it down to one thing. A single interface, this button launches a piece of AREX, that is a piece of Python, this runs a command executable. There, there's no reason to limit it to do any of that stuff. So you just tell it the, the actions I want to do. Um, if that's if running, uh, branching out to some other script is not enough, or you don't want to do that for the language, there's also support of an internal scripting language, uh, which I heard called ABD script which is essentially a, uh, a, it's like a minimal C uh, language, uh, allowing you some uh, branching and, and uh, you know, for loops and you know, control like that. But its main focus uh, is to allow you to interact with the data that is inherent in all of the objects you've created. So as you create a button, there's going to be like 20 properties to what that button is, including user data, which is just your space for whatever you want it to be. So you may, in common, locus, common times, you want to take it, and they click on the button, and you want, and that is like a go button. And this is a you know graphical interface for a command line utility uh, with parameters. And you've got a string input where they put in the command arcs, and then you've got a go button, and maybe you got a you know uh, file get file, so you can say this is the, this is where it is. Hey, I'm going to launch my you know BNC client or whatever but it needs to have these arguments. So then as you hit the go button, it has those steps to say, let me go to the string gadget, get that string, and put it together with the name I got from the get file, and now I know this is the guy, and I also know that I'm supposed to launch it as uh, a CLI command, and then it goes. So that you can do all of that with the internal scripting without jumping outside of it. And if you decide, Okay, this is cool, it's working great, but I don't want to distribute it as XML that anybody can do anything with. Then you just say, I want to 
generate it as C, and it does exactly this, makes it the same thing happens in C, because the scripting language is actually a very light layer over the top of existing uh, MIGOS APIs. So when you're saying get or set the variables within uh, the objects, the properties of the, uh, the class objects, it's translating that directly to get it R, set it R, get gadget R, et cetera. Anyway. So, yes? So a question came from the internet about supporting the newer gadgets and cancer and Yes, uh, I've been, I was just sure. Oh, okay. Uh, question was, uh, will there be support for the enhancer gadget set? Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, I was actually in a meeting early, uh, earlier yesterday with, uh, uh, with, you know, Aeon, and we talked about exactly that. I have some prerequisites which are being met, and those prerequisites simply are the gadget set, the gadgets themselves have to be freely distributed, you know, so enhancer, you can you're, they're, they're selling the, the programs that use the gadgets they've created, but not the gadgets themselves. The gadgets have to be freely distributed. The SDK information, header files, has to be distributed and correct. And also, everything documented has to be stable. As long as they meet those requirements, which uh, uh, Matthew said that's the plan, they're going to have a package to distribute it so that everybody can download it, then yes. Uh, I will be putting full support in to uh, ABD to create, to, to manage all the enhancer gadgets as well. And probably starting with some of the stuff that Mark Ritter here is doing, as we've already been talking about how to, how to do that. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, Mark. Is there a full menu builder? Is there a full menu builder? Good question, yes. Uh, there is a full menu builder. Uh, it will, it'll be a live uh, design uh, kind of concept. So you, when you, you've got your objects, you've got your base window, you just right click, go up to the menus. The first menu is gonna be add a new menu item. You say yes, boom, it'll do it. So it'll dynamically build the menus for you. Always showing a add, the extend one on there, you know, for the build part of it. But then you'll also be able to just, you know, uh, say you wanna display it and play with it as the full thing. Or of course, you can just export it as GUI bits, which I think is really what's going to happen internally. You say, okay, let me test it, and it goes, there's the GUI bits version, and now the menus don't want to have those interactions because you know, you're not editing it. But yeah, and it's going to be using the, uh, um, the, the menu class to do it, not the, uh, not the old menu, the catch, catch GUI menu. Because that, although you know, it works, it's a static layout, and it's not, you know, it's obsolete. It's, it's meant to not to be continued to use in new code. Works perfectly fine, fully supported. Don't use it in your bed. So it uses the the the, the, uh, the menu class, which is much more flexible uh, and stuff. And, uh, fortunately, now I'm also working closely with Hyperion and uh, on their uh, developer team, and it allows me to some direct insight into the OS uh, and what's happening with the Oopsie classes and the ability to fix things and you know, feed in suggestions and stuff. So it's like, I need uh, a way to do that. Because the, the interface designer, um, you're, you're working with a live interface. All the time it's a live interface. Uh, one of the things that you can see when, uh, on the very old version, the, the colors would change to tell you what you were kind of controlling. Uh, you have to find a tag that's appropriate to do that. You know, So I need to make sure that, hey, can I put a different color frame around every type of gadget? So I can do it in a consistent way, uh, that kind of thing. So, yeah. But we're we're definitely pushing between enhancer and what a uh, what Hyperion has been has done uh, and is out there. It's just not um, it's not very well known. Uh, and even if it's documented in the SDK, it's simply not there's there's not a lot of applications that use it. So I think that people, when people start working with this, even with just the base set. They're going to be surprised at what is what's possible, you know, because like I said, there's there's, there's around a thousand tags to support the objects that are in the OS, and that's not counting enhanced or any of those. The uh, as uh, a very a good question that Mark had, had brought up, which is something I had thought about before, as an advanced concept, is the, the would you have the ability to add your own custom Boopsie classes to the system? 
to be able to do that. And I, I believe it's possible. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, I think I believe Mark and I are probably going to be working with his classes to figure out exactly what the best way is to import that. And it gets a little tricky because in order for the GUI builder to work with those objects, it has to know everything about them. And if you're creating a brand new class, it's got brand new properties, you know, so it has to know what they are, what they're called, what they mean. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then as you branch in, since, since Boopsy, uh, you know, basic object-oriented system for intuition, is an object-oriented uh, system, it's kind of a black box container for all of these classes. So you can do anything. I mean, there are other classes that are not graphical. Like the ones you see the uh, uh, display on here that have mostly have icons, those are gadgets. The ones above it here are images. But that's not the image. Menu, window, A-Rex, you know, and, uh, and you get into uh, classes that aren't visual, but more internal logic. You know, so model class, just setting up communications to forward, so one guy changes a gadget here and forwards it to him, because it's going to forward to three other guys. Whereas normally you just do a direct connect one to one. So how do you get, you know, so you have to put another class in the middle. So you will have support for building all of those kinds of classes, and then custom ones, you know, as well. Any other, uh, how are we doing on time? <laughs> Give me an idea. Otherwise, I'll just ramble on for a while. Uh, okay, so, um, oh, uh, I, I just want, I want to take a picture I address um, the, the existing supporter. So, first of all, this is going to be coming out. Uh, we're targeting to put a uh, early adopters release out before, uh, or before December 5th of this year. Uh, the early adopters will be at, uh, for the $199 uh, price tag, which is $100 under the normal cost for the full commercial suite. Uh, and that will, uh, that's for anybody that wants to jump in now, work with the existing functionality, and get a stream of updates and, and help me test it, you know, uh, basically. So everybody that supported ABD in the past, which is going back a long way, uh, you will definitely get this the software that you know there, there isn't a buy-in to get to this level you didn't get the first one this is the first one <laughs> so uh, and also I would like to ask uh, anybody that is out there that is that has purchased uh, registered the SDK browser back in the day or ABD itself to please contact me you know via email uh, Jamie at midbybitsoftwaregroup.com you know and to make sure that I have your current email address I, I have a mailing list and stuff I've got all of the registrations, but there's a chunk of them that the email addresses are so old they just don't exist anymore. And I have nowhere to find these people to let them know, hey, your software is actually ready. I mean, it's, it's a decade late, but it's ready. <laughs> so one other so, question from online, what uh, yeah. versions of Mingo's 4 will your will this help for? Oh, good question. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the question is what version uh, of, for uh, of OS 4 will the output for? Uh, the, uh, the runtime requirement for the software is going to be Amigo S 4.1 final edition. Uh, and, you know, basically it's, it's because of all the gadget classes and everything. I, you know, if you don't have up to that level, you're going to miss out on a lot. Uh, but as far as the output goes, that is also the primary target to keep up with the OS, yeah. but it is certainly possible to uh, take and generate code that would work back farther on the board. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know why you would have that requirement. It's not like you're trying to make it back work on 3.1 and you know, architecture where you have a fixed point. Everybody that has 4 at least has the access to get to 4.1. So, uh, but the original template target was 4.0 compatible. And I can check it. I mean, it's, it's certainly possible that it might uh, be able to 4.1. But again, you're going to run into, well, you can't do this tag, you can't do that tag. And I, I, I don't have the time at this point to put a versioning system in and allow you to target one or the other. If it really, will, if it really becomes something that people have got a solid reason to do, then I'm certainly willing to, to consider it. You know, I, I, I didn't want to take it. The last thing I wanted to make sure to, to talk about for in terms of people who have supported it in the past 
pre-AMD. What is up with pre-AMD? It still, it still exists, it's still a thing. The SDK browser has been out there for free as its primary component for 14 some years. The rest of it will be out as well. Pre-AMD will have basically everything you're seeing here, the full suite of capability, but licensed to produce freeware software only. It's free tools to produce free software. So that's going to be the other one. So, okay? And I think all the upgrade costs, uh, I know Aaron had talked about that before. You buy into the current to the suite either at uh, the early adopters level before 1.0 is available, uh, and it's the uh, $200 basically. Or you buy in later and it's, and it's 300 But then uh, upgrade says so that entitles you to everything from 1.0 to 1.x, so all the way up just on the edge of 2.0, however long that takes. But the update should be pretty steady because this is a fully funded project. I've been working on this full time. Uh, and but when you then jump to the next major version, you can expect an upgrade cost of about 20% of the actual retail cost at that time. Which should, which should be pretty steady. So you'll figure about 20% of that, that $300 mark. So. And uh, I think that's about it for me. If you have still to come for any other questions. Yes, sir. For something that's at the beginning, maybe just Hollywood to tinker with, will this work with Hollywood uh, scripting language at all? Oh, the question is, will this uh, will AMD work with Hollywood at all? The, the technical <coughs> answer is yes, because Hollywood is a, is a scripting language, and the editor can write the scripting, and certainly you can do a Hollywood-based, um, uh, you know, highlighting thing for it. Beyond that, no. Uh, AMD does not target support for Hollywood. It targets to replace it in terms of native applications for the OS, because Hollywood is, is is great in its in its own right for what it does. But it's much too large and bulky for what for the actual applications you end up with natively. Well, I think beginners that are a little intimidated by C uh, on there, I'm hoping they will uh, be fairly comfortable with the internal AMD script. At least that'll take them pretty far, you know. And then, you know, but then, yeah, C C is the native target. C plus plus will be coming in uh, under any guys. So when when C plus plus is ready, AVD will fully support C plus plus creation as well. But that right as of right now, that's that's the only language that it intends to support. Now, if you have you know, if there's other suggestions uh, on languages, you know, uh, certainly certainly consider it. The the uh, um, you, you have the ability to take in and, uh, uh, of course, work with a text editor and, you know, code and create any, anything you want. So, I mean, in that aspect, you certainly can write in any language. But really, as far as the full visual designer, the output targets are its own XML descriptive, runtime interpreted output and AVD script and C and eventually C++ compiled. AVD script is a more simplified language that makes more sense to a beginner easier to read and yeah, see what it's doing. I hope so. Yes, <laughs> I hope so. I mean, it's it's going to read it's going to read fairly much like uh, C, but a little a little simplified. Its main purpose is not to be a, a full blown replacement language. Its main purpose is to allow you to. Uh, get most of what you want done on an application. Uh, uh, you know, so you design an interface, a graphical interface to run a, a, a external command line tool, that kind of a thing. Launch off other other stuff. You certainly, I, I'll, I'm sure I'll be surprised when people come back and, and have written very extensive things for this. Because once you give them the tools, you don't have any idea where they'll go. You know, so and as and as people work with it. And they say, you know, I, I really wanted to do this. I can do everything but that. Uh, I'm, I'm more than willing, tell me. I mean, I'm more than willing to see if it can be added in and developed into a more complete language. But its main purpose is to allow for interaction, basic logic control, interaction with the data of the objects and the interface, and, uh, and uh, also launching, launching other uh, external scripts and commands and, and you know, working with environment variables, getting returns that way. So. 
everything else a bit more complicated than that, you you know you generate it into C and then you start watching all this. Any other questions? No? Okay, I guess that's it for me. So thanks. Listen. So up next is gonna be uh, Hans. He'll be here and uh, we'll take like a five minute break.